the, the third down of success you had? Uh, you know, I thought we executed pretty good. Uh, we we're obviously playing a young quarterback, making his first start, and in an environment with that noise, you know, with our home crowd. And I'm sure that was a, a big factor for that too. But you know, we, we're doing some things a little bit better now. We're, we're doing some things, getting a little more pressure on the quarterback, coverage, down and distance awareness. You know, playing the sticks better in zone coverage and taking away the routes that we need to take away and not jumping things that we shouldn't. So a lot of little things contributed to it. I didn't realize it was that that uh, zero for 13. I, I thought they had a couple by penalty, and uh, but in the end, you know, we, we certainly improved in some areas. Was that was that one of the better four man rush games you guys have had this year? Is it, what have you noticed over the last few weeks? We didn't we didn't do a lot of four man rush. We had some we had some four man rush off of our odd package that we run, but uh, I thought I think we pressured the quarterback very well. You know, we're still not getting them on the ground very frequently, and we're letting them scramble on some critical times and get yardage, you know, getting out of the pocket. Uh, I thought there were about two or three times where our perimeter <coughs> just did an unbelievable job holding coverage when we lost him, uh, lost the quarterback. So we, we're still a work in progress in that area. We've got to keep doing, you know, doing a good job of that. As you had some lineup changes, then you had Brandon King, who I guess played for the first time on defense, wasn't it? Could you just yeah. talk about that? What he did exactly? And he was playing on our odd package, a 30 package, and uh, got about seven snaps, I think. Played really well. He had one misalignment, and he hadn't had a lot of, he's only had a week at it. And I thought maybe, you know, we need to get him out of that time so he didn't bust another one. But when I look back and look at the field, he really played well. Uh, make him work him into the regular linebacker rotation, I just don't know. I think hopefully that open day will give me a chance because he really did some good things. He's one of the best tacklers on the team. He's extremely fast, he's physical. He just struggled out back with some of the things you have to do as a deep safety. And uh, you know, you look at him sometimes and say, well, that guy's about 6'2", he's about 205, 215, he's a safety. Well, he may be a linebacker. And, and I'm gonna work him a little bit more there, but he's definitely gonna be contributing on that, thir on that 30 package. And that's with three linebackers at the time? We had two, two we keep two backers in and uh, six DBs and three down. So, so he's one of the two yeah, linebackers? Yeah, he did that. Had about seven snaps and did a good job on it. Uh, but I hope we maybe can play a little linebacker. We'll see. It's going to take a while before he can learn that. The other thing, of course, with the starters didn't have any practice time during the week. Chris got out there, I think, on Thursday and got about 25 or 30 plays while, with no contact. And I thought, number one, I thought the other two deserved to, play, to start because they practiced. And I had a little bit more confidence in them because they practiced and they knew what the game plan was. But but I thought Cass and, and Frost came in and when they did in the second series, it, it really made a big difference for us. El, speaking of, of the linebackers, how, how did Swain and, and Trey do in their first start? Did okay. Swain was very solid. Uh, Trey, you know, he made some freshman mistakes. Uh, a couple of alignment issues where he didn't recognize the formation and adjustment. But uh, it was good for him to, to have that happen. I think that'll certainly help him down the road. Is, is the success this year defensively just a natural progression of knowing the, the schemes, the offense, or the defense better? Or, I mean, what do you attribute? It's, it's a drastic change. Yeah, some, some of it is no question. You know, this time last year, we, we were having 25, 28, 30 missed assignments every game. Uh, now we're coming out of the game, we've got eight, maybe 10. And that's a drastic number when you don't have about 65, 70 players. Uh, that's, that's a big factor. We just have a little different complexion, you know. Last year we were a little bit faster, we were better uh, third down pass rush. Had a little more age in the secondary. But in the box, you know, against the run, we weren't very physical, weren't very strong, and we were playing some things incorrectly. And uh, yeah, this time last year we were very inconsistent. And we've still got some things to work on. I mean, statistically, if you just pull out the play-by-play -play and, and look at the drive charts and all that, I mean, it's really impressive. But we've got a lot of things that we're not doing as well as we should. And, you know, frankly, we're playing a young quarterback. This week we're going to be playing a quarterback who may be the best in the country at running the offense he runs. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a whole different deal. He's a veteran. He's had about eight starts last year and he's played really well this year. And he's going to be playing at their place instead of our place. So I'm certainly not taking anything away from the effort and the accomplishment of our players. I think they did a great job. I'm really proud of them. But the test is going to get a lot tougher. And uh, it was a, a, a big factor there to have a young quarterback and a, a 
stadium, you know, as loud as it was. Now, as you mentioned, concern about the scrambling quarterbacks, and Harris breaks off that one run for 30 yards when things do break down. When you are going up against Prescott and what he can do on purpose and when things break down, what do you have to do this week to improve in those? You know, we can't do anything different scheme-wise because we, you know, we got to play the coverage as we got. We just got to do a better job, you know, staying on rush lanes and keeping him boxed up. Uh, one of the things that he broke through, uh, broke out on the other day was man under 2D. Probably won't play that much against this guy. Maybe we will. We'll have to pick our times. But anytime you know, you're rushing, you got all man under and no zone, you you know, got nobody hanging around there to help you. And that's got to improve. I mean, we get let him escape for too many yardage. I think that was the longest run of the night. Yeah, when, when you look on film from last year's game to now, with that, what's his? What's the biggest improvement? Does him being comfortable? Has he improved from last game last year? Yeah, yeah, from the game when he played you guys. Yeah, well, you know that was his first start. Yeah. If you remember, we we prepared for uh, Chris Ralph, uh, who was recruited when I was there, and, and a very different type player. And we didn't have a really good plan, and then when we tried to adjust it on the fly, they still did an excellent job. And his uh, runs last year, design runs. Were, were really the biggest problem we had in that game. So we, we obviously know what he's capable of doing. He was not as good at that time in maybe reading coverages and his accurate throwing. And right now, I mean, he is as good a dual threat quarterback as there is in America. He's throwing the ball on time. He's throwing it accurately. You know, the little hot reads that everybody has off the zone reads when they see blitz coming or they know they don't have anything on the run. And they, the quick throws outside on the hitches or the bubbles. I mean, he's hitting those things, the timing of them and the accuracy of them is going to catch the ball and get up field. Uh, so it's just a big difference. You know, if those things aren't thrown exactly right, they're not as effective. So there's certain things that he's just doing so much better now than just running with the ball. Added threat there and, and added concern trying to prepare for their receivers. They got big guys, it seems, at every position. They got two big wide outs on the outside, and they got excellent speed on the inside receivers. Uh, the guy I think that really gives them their versatility is, is what, what we call our H-back, and he lines up as a tight end, he lines up as a fullback, he lines up as a wide out. Uh, they, can, they can know huddle and tempo without changing personnel and give you every formation in the book. You know, and, and that makes it extremely hard because you know, we'll shuffle our personnel packages sometimes and match up on down and distance or certain uh, skill or big guys come on the field. Well, they don't change them much. Occasionally they'll, they'll change up a little bit, but uh, that allows them to go faster. They, they may be the fastest paced team that we've played ever. Ellis, did it makes you? Makes uh, it very difficult when you got a dual threat quarterback, you got the tempo, and you don't have to sub. It really makes it tough. Having been there, game day going there for the first time this weekend, what will it be like for those folks over there? Well, I've you know I've been back with South Carolina once, uh, but I've not been back since they enlarged the stadium. You know, kind of anxious to see it. Uh, it's still open-ended on one end, but it's horseshoe, you know, closed in on the other. And I'm sure it's going to be a louder environment and, uh, and of course, more fans, obviously. And, and you know, I think it's going to be one of the toughest environments we've been in, even <coughs> last year. You know. What would end up starting more Mel President this week and how do he play against uh, You know, Rodney bases it really on, a lot of times on their practice performance. In their, in their previous game performance, and he's steadily been improving and did a good job, and I think he had confidence and, and gave him the start. Uh, it's, it's almost a reward mechanism because they're all capable of playing, and we're playing a lot of guys because that's our philosophy. But the ones that get the start are the ones that usually have the best week of practice, and, you know, coming off of a good game. Alex, how did uh, Jonathan Mincy play Saturday? He, I thought he played exceptionally well. Uh, there were a couple of breakups, y'all probably noticed, had some key tackles. Uh, there were some times where I think there was a, the primary receiver and they took their eyes off of him real quick because he looked like he had good coverage. But I thought he played really well. It seems like this year that he's been thrown at less. Is there something that you're seeing in just his technique and improvement that is making that such, or is it just because Jones is a new guy where a team's yeah. going to pick on him now? I think probably they look at film and they see this kid's started 20-something games and this one's never started until this year. And, you know, Travon's out there as a – wide out, converted wide out, probably testing those guys a little bit. The other thing, everybody's going to go after whoever the star is covering because they're going to assume he's the least cover guy on the field. And, and Cadillac sometimes surprises him uh, with his speed and his coverability. 
But but really, I think it's what you said. I think they're going after certain players, and they feel like they're going after the least experienced when they go after the others. How's Kenyon doing? It? Last one, think he can make it back this week. Or she's Who is that? Oh, Kenyon. I, I don't know. It's, I think it's high for spring. He actually did it, you know, on, uh, not on the field. And it happened, I think, Friday or either yeah, Friday at class. So it's really only about four days, you know, removed. But we haven't had anything other than this day by day. All right. Thank you, sir.